Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends, we have been uh, discussing very preliminary things about stability augmentation system. Although they are preliminary, but they are very fundamental in nature. When we will be doing some higher level course, we will understand how important are these understanding. And we have kept our focus on the damping ratio and natural frequencies and we have been telling that we are concerned about the handling qualities of the airplane because the pilot has to be comfortable, passenger has to be comfortable and there are based on experience, based on empirical data, based on lot of psychoanalysis, there are some guidelines that has been postulated which somehow give guidelines for handling qualities. So I'll qualities. I will just glance through those and these handling qualities are postulated in terms of we will see the damping ratio and natural frequency of particular mode. For example, there is a fugoid mode. So, these handling qualities will tell what should be the limit on damping ratio. If it is short period, what is the limit on natural frequency or damping ratio based on type of aircraft based on type of flight phase okay, and based on the failures. For example, if you are designing a large transport airplane, the criteria will be different than a, than a light weight airplane. For a large airplane, the additional criteria will be even if one engine fails for a multi engine aircraft, the aircraft should have minimum this, 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 this performance characteristics. It should be able to execute those that with a single engine it should be able to have a climb of this much, its natural frequency or its damping ratio should be this much or it should be able to complete the flight phase or it should be immediately abrupt uh, ab edit, or it should immediately abruptly cut down the flight phase. All those things will come and to understand that to make it more systematic the airworthiness committees in association with designers, they have given some criteria, some guidelines. In that first, what they have done, they have defined airplane classes. So, in class 1, the class 1 includes or addresses light utility aircraft, primary trainer and light observation aircraft. Okay. So, that all those aircraft which comes under light utility aircraft category, they are classified as class 1 type aircraft. In class 2 type, you have heavy utility like maybe search and rescue, it also has light medium transport cargo tankers, then early warning system, anti submarine and there are so many other type of aircraft which are summarized in class 2 and in class 3, they are large heavy low to medium maneuverable aircraft like heavy transport, cargo airplane, then trainer for class 3. All this type of airplane are classified in class 3 and class 4 is high maneuverability aircraft like this like fighter interceptor, the trainer of class 4, you will find many such type of airplane. If I add one more, it is tactical, tactical reconnaissance. Like that. Okay. So, what is the first approach? Depending upon the type of aircraft, visa which type of performance required, 
there are one, two, three, four category or classes of aircraft. Okay, this is one. Second comes is definition of flight phase. So, what was the first? How it was characterized to give you a complete idea about handling qualities. First thing was you identify this aircraft belongs to which class? Class 1, class 2, class 3 or class 4? First exercise is this. And which aircraft should be class 1? You have to check. Is it light utility? Is it primary trainer? Is it light observation? Like that you have to make a judgment and you classify the airplane. So, after the class or classification based on the type of aircraft, we are now discussing about definition of flight phase because all this handling qualities, it is not only important whether it is a light utility aircraft or whether it is a high maneuverability aircraft, we need to know about the flight phase and how they are characterized that I am now going to list out. Category A, category A and that is like air to air combat, then B, I am listing few of them, ground attack, I have started with military aircraft, so forgive me, I do not believe in war and all, At the same time we should be strong enough so that nobody can dare to trouble us. So, it is important we know all these things. In flight refueling, you have then close formation flight, there are many you can google through and you will get. This material I am presenting, referring book by Roshko. Okay. So, this is category A, which is defining the flight phase. We also have category B, category B, and in that we will have climb. The flight phase is climb, cruise. Loiter, descent, emergency, deceleration, and aerial, aerial delivery. I am just mentioning few of them, right. So, this is category B. That means, we are now defining different different flight phases. In category A, these are the flight phase that has included in category B, climb, cruise, loiter, descent, emergency de uh, deceleration, aerial delivery, these are the flight phase phases categorized under category B. Similarly, you have category C. In category C, you have takeoff, you have catapult takeoff, you have approach, you have landing, and many more, right. That comes to category C. So, what we have seen, how it has been handled, how the guidelines have been structured. First, we look for the airplane classes, which class the airplane belongs to. Looking at these attributes, if it is in class 1 or class 2, then we check the flight phases, whether it belongs to category A, that is, is it the air to air combat airplane, or the, is it the air to air combat flight phase we are talking about. Similarly, if I want to go for category B, I need to look for cruise, climb, loiter, all these flight phases and category C, the takeoff, 
catapult, takeoff, approach, landing, etc. These are the flight phases under each category. So, we have classes, we have categories. Now, we are talking about level. When you say level 1, it means flying qualities, flying qualities clearly adequate, clearly adequate for mission flight phase, for mission flight phase. Let me write the second one, then I will explain for level 2, flying qualities adequate, adequate. However, or but pilot has to put extra effort okay, and this level 3 you could guess now what is level 3 flying quality is such that the airplane can be controlled safely flying qualities qualities adequate to control the airplane or aircraft safely however however excessive workload on the pilot. I am not writing everything just to give the quality statements which are good enough to excite you and read through different textbook. The level 1 says flying quality is clearly adequate for mission flight phase. So, absolutely fine for level 1 aircraft. Level 2, it is adequate, but little bit of pilot has to put extra effort. right? And level 3 is flying quality is adequate, adequate to control the airplane. right? That means, the pilot has to now put lot of extra effort. So, that is the level 3. That you should understand this three level, level 1, level 2, level 2, level 3 are extremely important. So, what is the approach now you could see? First, we identify the class of aircraft, then we identify the flight mission or flight phase and then we are saying now there are level 1, level 2, level 3 handling qualities. If the handling quality is such that it is clearly adequate pilot, nothing extra he has to put level 1 aircraft. Level 2, little bit you have to put and level 3 is quality is good enough for safety to control the airplane from safety point of view, but lot of excessive effort comes from the pilot that is the level 3 handling qualities. Right. Now, with this 3 understanding, now we will come back to how these things are quantified through zeta, omega n etcetera. I will only give some representative number. Once we identify class, category and level and link qualities level, as I told you, we will be looking through the damping ratio and natural frequency of different modes. If I take fugoid mode, the requirement is for level 1 qualities for level 1, you have to ensure that zeta fugoid is greater than equal to 0 0.04. For level 2, it should be zeta p greater than equal to 0 and level 3 time to double for fugoid is greater than 55 seconds. Do you understand time to double for fugoid? I know fugoid is this. 
time to double means it is actually going on increasing right so whenever it is diverging we say time to double and whenever it is converging we say we try to use time to half that is time to double the amplitude this is time to half the amplitude okay so let us see something on time to double in fugoid and you can know that you know that the fugoid response i can write in terms of a e to the power minus zeta fugoid omega fugoid t into sine omega fugoid plus phi right the fugoid response i can express like this it is like sinusoidal with a damping to the exponential if i come back here this is the response for a fugoid which is a sinusoidal component and a exponential component which will decay or it may increase the envelope also depending upon the sign and if i want to look for time to double then i can easily write a e to the power zeta p omega p t not plus t 2 p is equal to twice a e to the power zeta p omega p into t not and when i equate this i find the expression t 2 p is ln 2 by minus zeta fugoid omega fugoid and you could see that if i want time to double to be positive then zeta p omega p should be less than 0 and omega p is never less than 0 so the only way it could be possible is the damping ratio is negative then only we talk about time to double that means the undamped system okay so this is undamped so we say fugoid is undamped Second, if zeta p is greater than 0, then this time to double is no more valid. So, this is now interpreted as time to half and that is ln 2 by zeta omega n fugoid or omega fugoid. So, that way level 3 you could understand if time to double is 55 seconds, that means what you are telling that the airplane has a divergent undamped fugoid, but still if it meets this criteria pilot by putting extra effort excessive of course in that nature will be able to control the airplane to safety. Okay. This is what what is level 1 if zeta p is greater than 0 0.04 fantastic not much effort on the pilot, but let us say it is not greater than 0 0.04 just greater than 0. So, zeta p is basically positive. So then also handling qualities will be okay enough for the pilot to put extra effort and this is level 3 where we are talking about time to double means the fugoid is actually undamped, but as long as this is greater than 55 seconds the pilot will be able to control the airplane to safety okay that is the understanding. So that is the level 1 level 2 level 3 handling qualities expressed in terms of zeta and omega n for the fugoid mode. Remember that is exactly I was telling we will be postulating every requirement through zeta p on omega n. Okay. It reminds me one thing please understand unstable does not mean uncontrollable right. Now it is modern aircraft are statically unstable. So, unstable does not necessarily mean uncontrollable right. Okay. So, if the fugoid is undamped it does not mean I cannot control it, but as long as this fugoid has this criteria satisfied then controlling the airplane by putting extra effort with the pilot will be well within the handling qualities for level 3 requirement that is the understanding. Okay. Or to tell this key suppose at some altitude the fugue damping is just 0 0.02. So, now you have to use the SAS to ensure that for that time the fugue damping becomes more than 0 0.04 that is what the SAS is important. Right. Now, this was fugue and now we are talking about short period mostly you find the SAS is used for short period and short period requirement is before I come to short period please uh, remember fugoid damping for a glide phase is goes inversely with C L by C D right. So, if you want to increase the fugoid damping 
best way to increase is decrease CL by CD, right? So that concept should come from there. That you have to fly such a way that at such an angle that CL by CD is not that high, or you increase the drag, okay, by putting some surface at that time. So with that concept, you can increase the fugue damping for a gliding phase. Now let us come to the short period. When it comes to short period, the requirement is this. If I draw it like this, this is category A and C, and this is category B. This is a flight phase. You know, category when I say it's flight phase, you are talking about. And level, if it is a level 1, then zeta short period should be minimum and this is maximum. So, minimum should be 0 0.35, maximum should be 1.3. Similarly, for category B flight phase, zeta short period and zeta short period, this is again zeta short period maximum, zeta short period this is maximum and this is minimum. For this it will be 0 0.3 and 2.0. Please understand, for category A and category C airplane, for level 1 uh, qualities, the short period damping ratio minimum should be 0 0.35 and maximum it could be 1.3. For category B flight phase, for level 1, the short period minimum should be 0.3, the damping ratio should be 0.3, maximum 2.0. Okay. For level 2, if you see, it is similarly it is 0 0.25 and 2.0, here it is 0 0.2 and 2.0. And level 3, which is very rare, level 3, you know, we need 0 0.15 and this is 0 0.15. But this is, we put asterisk marks, it may get reduced as we are going higher and higher altitude. So, and this is the type of level 3, a very, very rare. There are other criteria, other constraints come. So, focus here level 1 and level 2 and the point which I was trying to draw that it is finally on the damping ratio and soon, soon you will find the natural frequency also will come into the play. Okay. Please understand one thing, in the dynamics whenever we wrote the equation, the response at e to the power lambda t then sine all those things depending upon it is oscillatory or it is just first order response. This e to the power lambda t that decides the amplitude envelope and also decide whether it is going to divergent or it is going to converge, whether it is going to reduce or going to go on undamped like this. Right? So, that is why zeta plays an important role. Right? If I talk about spiral, then it is if I write class 1 and 4, by now you know what is class 1 and 4. And here, if I draw a line like this, this is flight phase category, flight phase, or which is category, cat. Then I have level one, I have level two, I have level three. You fight for category 1 and 4, for flight phase, let me draw a line to that. For flight phase A, B and C, for level 1, for A it is 12 seconds and for this is 20 seconds. What are these 10 second, 12 seconds and 20 seconds? These are time to double the amplitude. Okay, you're talking about spiral. This time to double the amplitude. That means again, it is saying when you're talking about time to double, means 
is showing undamped, but unstable does not mean uncontrollable. Okay. For level 2, it is 12 second, 12 here, and here it is 12 second. And for level 3, it is 4 second, and it is 4 second. Right. And for 2 and 3, 2 and 3 class of airplane, this is flight phase, all, all flight phase, A, B, C, this is 20 second, 20 sec, 12 second, and this is 4 second, right. And you could see when I am giving a guideline to the designer to ensure the handling qualities as per level 1, level 2, level 3, what I am telling to the designer, ensure that if you want a level 1 performance, then time to double should be of these values for category 1, category 2, category 4. And when I am talking about time to double, that means I am talking again in terms of zeta and omega n. Right? You have seen the expression of time to double. Okay? And this is typically, if you are allowing it to double, then I am talking about spiral divergence, undamped. Okay? And these are of course, when I say these seconds, this is minimum time to double. These are all, you understand that minimum time to double. Why it is minimum? Because if it is too fast, then it will be difficult to control. Right? So, that is why the restriction is on minimum time to double. So, after spiral, we will again come back to, I will strongly suggest you people should read or Google search and have more insight. After spiral, now we will see minimum minimum Dutch roll frequency and damping. Let me write again this is level, again it is flight phase, this is category, flight phase. Then comes class, you see we have been always talking about this thing, class, and then it is minimum zeta Dutch roll, this is minimum zeta Dutch roll, omega Dutch roll, natural frequency Dutch roll, uh, also minimum omega Dutch roll frequency. It is postulated or the specifications are given like this. If it is for level 1 qualities we are looking for and if you have, let me draw a line. And if you have two types of class, one A, one B, this is class 1, class 4, class 2, class 3, then these values are for 1 and 4, it is 0 0.19 minimum, here also 0 0.19, here 0 0.35, again 0 0.35, this is 1.0 and this is 0 0.4. This uh, 0 0.4 star we have put, this may change based on the customer's requirement. Uh, these are finer details, so you please try to understand for the Level 1 handling quality, they have been specified now by minimum Dutch roll damping ratio, also the product zeta d, omega d, and also minimum Dutch roll frequency in radians per second. For B, it is all 0 0.08, 0 0.15, and again 0 0.4 star. For C, 
for flight phase C, again you will see that for 1, 2 and 4, it will be 0 0.08, 0 0.15, 0 0.08, 0 0.15 and 1.0. Right. And for 2 as well as 3, there are different variation of the category class 2. So, I am mentioning both, you will find it is again 0 0.08 and 0 0.15 and 0 0.4 again star. Similarly, you will find for level 2, level 3. So, I do not want to really make your life miserable by going on writing all this. What I wanted to communicate to you was, when you are talking about the handling qualities, you have seen for fugoid, for spiral or for Dutch roll, these are primarily decided by the damping ratio and natural frequency or their combinations. Those who are interested to know exact numbers, I suggest them read latest airworthiness requirements. You can Google search, go for textbook. These numbers goes on changing depending upon the technology depending upon the control system you have got. Okay, these are the some guideline numbers. Right. What is the important message is we need to know how to find zeta d and omega n. We also need to know how can I change zeta d and omega n because I know the zeta or damping ratio changes with speed, changes with altitude. Right. You cannot design an aircraft by laying out this component where the zeta will not change because zeta depends upon density, speed. So, whenever you require the different values of zeta and omega or different handling qualities, the SAS is very handy, right? That is why we are designing SAS. Okay.